of about 121 islands, 75 of them are inhabited. The population is about 280,000. 69% of the people live in Tahiti, on the Tahitian island. Um, it's a French colony since the mid-1800s, and right now there is a movement for their independence. In fact, they have voted for their independence from France. Uh, the people do not care for the French. The French have not treated them very well. They're like third-class citizens. They can't get good jobs. They have no hope in getting good jobs because the French come over and take all the jobs, even the teaching. They can't even be teachers for their children. It's all the French people that come over. So they really don't like them, and, and they voted for their independence, and it's still an ongoing process. The trouble with this is that China is sitting on the doorstep waiting to take over, and so they just need prayer that they will be aware of China's motives and that this won't happen to them. The official language is French, and there are four native languages. <clears throat> Tourism is 95% of the economy. There's some fishing and agriculture industries, and it's a big exporter of black pearls. The French public education system is available to everybody, but it's not very good. Like I said, the Tahitians cannot teach their own children, or they can't get the jobs. The temperature there is in the mid-70s and 80s. It's very, very high humidity, and it's a strong radiant heat. They consider themselves a Christian country, so they're very open to teaching. Uh, it's 92% Christian, 54% Protestant, 38% Roman Catholic, but there's been no really good Bible teaching there. We flew in to the cap. Sorry, just okay, okay. Go ahead. We flew in the first day to the capital, Papite, and the next night we had our first conference, which we'll talk about. So we had two there in Papite, and then the third time was down with the children down in the lower part of Tahiti. Then we took a ferry over to the island of Morea and did uh, two conferences over there and came back for our last two-day conference on the island of Tahiti. Uh, Patty and I were part of a five-woman team from Village Ministries International, which is out of Oklahoma City. We were there for two weeks. We went to six different locations, as you can see from the map. We did it in the day. We, we did it in the night. We were in different venues. We were in a church. We were in a home, and we were in a retreat center. Um, and we spoke to women and children who were very, very hungry to hear God's word. Um, our purpose in going as, as the women's ministry is always to present a clear grace gospel and then to give them the mechanics um, of how to live the Christian way of life and to encourage the ladies that no matter what they are going through in their life, God knows about it, he cares, he understands, and if they look to him, he will absolutely meet that need. Our host missionaries on the left are uh, Mark and Renee Perkins. Mark was a doctrinal pastor teacher from the Denver, Colorado area for about 20 years. Um, he has served on many boards, and he has taught in Bible institutes. Renee grew up in Baraka Church, which many of you are familiar with, and she has taught children for over 40 years. They seem absolutely wonderful um, in doing what they do, and they seem very uniquely qualified for the mission God has given them. They are a wonderful couple. Um, uh, and like Patty said, they've just been in Tahiti, Tahiti for about 18 months, and they are walking by faith, letting God open up the opportunities that he has for them as they go. And it was really marvelous to see. Uh, and part of the, one of the main reasons we were there was to open up opportunity for women's ministry there. And that happened everywhere, everywhere we went. Our team was Jackie and I. Uh, we were also had, well, there was a pretty big team, picture on the bottom here if you can see it, um, Ruth Bennett from Seattle, Washington, Susie Hughes from Tulsa, Oklahoma, she also went with Jackie and I to the Philippines, Wynn Noren, who is head of the women's ministry for uh, Village Ministries International, and she was also our team leader, and then Renee Perkins, who was our missionary. Uh, 
Now for the content of what we usually take when we do these women's ministry. Our theme is always our God of hope from Romans 15, 13. Our core content of what we teach, we teach about the God of hope, what he is like, what is the essence of God that makes them able to trust him, and then how to teach the Christian life through sharing with them God's wonderful grace that he has provided for us in the six categories of grace, which I've noticed Ron will be teaching in the School of Biblical Theology, and that is salvation in Jesus Christ. We teach the Holy Spirit's ministry. We teach walking by faith and the faith cycle. We teach God's sufficiency in any type of suffering. We teach peace at the point of death for the believer in Jesus Christ and the possibility of eternal rewards. There are additional sessions on how God's grace is the answer to all different kinds of suffering. The other courses that were taught were grieving, forgiveness, how to help children who have experienced bad things, and domestic abuse. So this is the first night, uh, well, the second night that we were there. It's the first conference that we had. It was in the Mayohe Protestant Church. It was on the island of Tahiti, and it was a joyful time with these ladies. These were the leadership ladies of this church. The sessions were on the role of the Holy Spirit, helping children who have experienced bad things, and grieving. Two of the women were physically affected by the class on grief, and you could tell. Hopefully they were very encouraged hearing about the God of hope. And several of the women also seemed especially interested on the class on helping children. When we got there, we found out that our translator had canceled on us. So these women speak French. We really didn't know how we were going to communicate with them. But God always provides. And this young lady, her name is Maylene. Uh, she was a young woman with Down syndrome. She'd never translated for anybody before. But she stepped forward, and she did a wonderful job, and we were very thankful to have her. Mark and Renee, Renee Perkins have a wonderful ministry already established which, with their English Bible Club. They hold this twice a week for two hours um, each day. Susie Hughes headed up this ministry for our time there. Uh, Patty and I helped. The children were hungry for attention and full of energy. So we did Bible songs, we did crafts, we did uh, Bible lessons. Uh, Susie did an absolutely wonderful job at presenting the gospel, and it was so very special at the time, and you know, they were all over the place um, during most of the time that, that we had them. But when the gospel was presented, God the Holy Spirit, just to see him hone these children in, to listen to the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and how they could know their Savior was just a most wonderful thing. Most wonderful thing. So Susie Hughes, um, in the front there, she told the story of Jonah, and she even wore her snorkeling gear and all that, which the kids loved, including her flippers walking out there with them. So they just loved that, of course. Jackie taught uh, the children that God is always there with them and that he always loves them. So the next day, we did a conference at Renee and Mark's uh, house. And it was a day-long conference. These people seemed especially appreciative on the classes on the role of the Holy Spirit. And Maylene, again, was our translator along with her mother. Her mother is... Uh -oh. Well, you can go here. That's fine. Okay. Her mother is right here on the end. Oh, you didn't. I didn't. Uh, I advance. didn't advance. <laughs> Y'all can't see that. Okay. Yeah, her mother is right here. This lady right here. Okay. Anyway, they did our translations for us, and at the end of the time, it was a um, full day conference. And at the end of the time, there we went outside. Everybody was getting their rides home, and God provided a double rainbow over the area. So it was just, it was just confirmation, and grace to a wonderful day. Okay, the third conference we had was with a group of ladies, uh, about 15 ladies. It's at the Upper Room Church on Morea Island. We traveled to another island by about a 45-minute ferry ride. It was an Assembly of God church. 
Most of the girls, were, ladies, were relatively young. They were joyful, hungry for God's word, and so appreciative that, that we were there sharing it. We were there for four consecutive nights for about three hours each. So we really got to know them um, um, in, a, in, a, in a good way and shared some of what was going on in their lives. Okay, so Vania, um, she shared how God had been faithful in her testing. This church was actually at her home. They were having financial testing, and she was able to share with us each night what God was doing and how he was providing, and we were able to pray with her and for her about these circumstances. So Renee is real excited because she will be able to go to Morea and follow up with these ladies and have more teaching opportunities with them. And the pastor wrote Mark and Renee nightly to say how much the ladies were enjoying how much, and how much they were learning. We had one interesting incident. Um, I had the class on the Holy Spirit that night, and uh, we were talking about, uh, was sharing sins you think, there are sins you think, sins you say, and sins you do, uh, just to help them identify sins from the Word. And one of the ladies uh, that was sitting there next to her two daughters she, I, I just happened to mention that worrying was a, was a sin, um, a sin of the mind. And she said, no, 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 no. You, uh, you have to worry. If you do not worry, you do not love your children. And um, her two children were just sitting right next to her, and we all as mothers understand that. But we had a, a very brief um, um, uh, response to that that kind of took care of it and then the next day it was it was really wonderful because we asked Renee the host missionary to get up there and just to explain the difference to the ladies in a in a humorous way but the difference between worrying and being concerned and giving it to the Lord so it was really a great opportunity um, but uh, uh, they kept things very lively you have anything else? Okay. The fourth group we went to was the Morea women's domestic abuse situation. This was a very, very unique opportunity for us and the first that we've ever had like this. Uh, Mark Perkins had stated to us that Tahiti and the islands there present huge challenges for the women. Uh, domestic abuse is so common there that many consider it normal for a marriage. Our translator, Mareva, right here, had a very close friend, Lolita, who was in charge of the Maria uh, Women's Domestic Abuse Association. She has this ministry, she provides aid to the ladies, she gives them clothes, and she helps them in filing the paperwork, uh, in filing some of the paperwork for the domestic abuse situations. But it had been on Lolita's heart for a long time. She was doing a lot of physical things for the ladies, but on her heart as a believer, she knew God and his uh, God was the solution for these ladies, and it was her desire that the spiritual solutions be presented to the ladies. So we had to be interviewed. A group came over, and we had to all be interviewed as to what we were going to present as the spiritual solutions. Uh, we passed, so we were we were able to have them come. Um, and uh, but she didn't realize this was missing in her ministry, and she and her staff were so encouraged by the teaching of the spiritual solutions, salvation, forgiveness, identity in Christ, the faith rest life. She, uh, she was so very uh, appreciative, and her staff were just, um, just concentrating, just writing everything down. It was just really a, a, a wonderful thing. The rest of the ladies there were um, uh, part of the groups that were victims of domestic abuse. You, these ladies had no idea that they were coming to a religious uh, meeting. They were told that they were just coming to meet some American ladies. And so we only had one lady get up and go to Lolita, her instructor there, and say, I didn't know this was going to be a religious meeting. And But she ended up staying, and they all stayed, and I think they really benefited from this because they were all experiencing domestic abuse. 
And if you notice in the photo, um, there was a lot of wind that day, and we were very thankful for the wind because it was very hot and it was outside. We were under a tree, but it was still, you know, very warm. But when the time for the gospel it was always very interesting because when the time that the gospel was being given, a great wind came up, and the um, the speaker for that session had to really project her voice to be heard. But we believe it was just very, very well received. Our final conference um, um, was at the Central Cana Two-Day Retreat Center. Uh, we ended our time um, on a Friday and a Saturday where we were able, because it was two days long, to teach our entire curriculum of classes. Aline, who you see on the left, uh, was one of our main translators. And she had studied with Renee all of the notes that and the handouts that the ladies received. And she was so positive to the material that Renee, the host missionary, said she wanted to study each and every one uh, so that she would be very prepared when it came time for the translation. Um, she was such a huge help to us and invited many of the ladies to hear God's word at the retreat. She translated in a very engaging and with such heart. And she told Renee that she had uh, was familiar with a lot of these truths, but she had never really seen them presented in such an organized way. And she was sure all the ladies would be blessed. She was especially encouraged by the teaching of Joseph and the faithfulness of God. God was with him in everything he went through and blessed him through all of his sufferings. And she is one of the types of ladies that we look for everywhere we go because, and these are the type of ladies that already have a good bit of spiritual growth under their belt. And then when they hear the material, they absorb it and they immediately are motivated to teach it to others. And she was one of those ladies for us. It, it was a wonderful thing. So Eileen had sent out emails to ladies, friends of hers, and different Christian groups that she knew of and invited people to this two-day conference the weeks and even a month or so ahead. So she was hoping for a big crowd, but the last night before the conference, she remembered that she had not contacted her friend Tahia. So she called Tahia, which is over here, the night before the conference, and Tahia was having a ministry uh, to a group of ladies that she was teaching, and she was feeling really down and depressed because she felt like she was always teaching and not getting fed herself. She had no way of really getting more information and more doctrine for her own soul. So she was thrilled to hear about this conference, even though she just heard about it the night before. And not only did she come the next day, she brought seven ladies with her who ended up being the bulk of our people that were there. She had led every one of these ladies to Christ herself. That's really neat. Um, another incident with Tahia. Um, oh, do you want to change the slide? Yeah. Uh, when we, we broke into a prayer and counseling time at one point in our sessions, and I noticed immediately that Tahia sought out a very young believer that we'll talk about in just a second. Um, and she found that... Um, in their time, that uh, Hina Harry, this girl, she was very reticent to share a prayer request with her. And so Tahir shared with me later on, she said, I went immediately to the Holy Spirit. And I said, well, how can I help this lady? And she was just prompted to share something that she had been through in her life in, in, in the hopes that uh, that to, uh, Hannah Harry would open up with that. And what she shared with her was uh, that she had experienced a father wound uh, growing up in her life. And Hannah Harry immediately responded to her, well, I guess we have the same wound. And uh, so after that, there was a great ministry and prayer time th that followed that. It was a wonderful thing. Um, and just an interesting thing of how Hannah Harry came to us, um, only God does these things, you know, but, but he does. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, she was going for, her, for a run with her husband, who was Buddhist, and they were running by, we were at a Catholic retreat center, and they were running by jogging, and she happened to stop to talk to one of the nuns at the convent, not the convent, the retreat center, um, 
And uh, you know, Harry had been saved this past Easter. And so she was having a conversation, and the, the nun, the sister, knew her. And two of our people just happened to be down there at that time. And so the nun said, well, why don't you ask her to come to the conference? And so she, our people did. She came up immediately in her running clothes uh, and just participated in, in the conference. She had her phone with her. She was looking up every verse. Uh, and she told us, she told us that, um, that she had been listening to the Pope every day uh, because she was so desperate for good Bible teaching. And, and this is how God met her need. Um, with, with coming to the conference. Um, she came back the next day as well, and uh, the Perkins were able to provide her with a new study Bible and invited her to their church on Sunday, which she attended, and at which she already knew some of the people who were there. So truly a work of God's grace for her life. On the bottom picture over here, if you can see it, uh, this again is our translator, Aline, for uh, much of, for all of this conference, except that evening her husband came to join us. His name was Eduardo, and he helped to translate. Translating apparently is a very tiring, exhausting thing because you got to think in two languages. So she was thankful, and he did a wonderful job too. So we really appreciated both of them translating for us. And then one other lady we wanted to talk about was Vea Ria. Uh, she is one of the ladies that Tahia had brought with her, and Vayaria lived on a very remote part of the island. There's no way to get there by car. You have to take a boat. She had no electricity, so she had met Tahia on the boat one time, and Tahia had been prompted by the Holy Spirit to give her the gospel. So she had gotten saved, and what it showed me is God do, really does want everybody all over the world in the uttermost parts of the earth to get saved because she came a, a long distance and she was able, able to come to our conference. And so God had just done this for her. Also, when she got saved, her whole family rejected her. They won't have anything to do with her. Um, they won't even speak to her. And so she just asked for prayer for her family and for that relationship for them all to get saved. So, of course, we, are, we can continue to do that for her. And just a group picture um, of our retreat. Again, a, just a wonderful group of ladies that we so thoroughly enjoyed and were ministered to by them as well. And this is the end of our trip. So two of our ladies, uh, Ruth and Wynn, had gone on to another island for a little R&R. &R, and the other three of us were headed home. So this is Susie and Jackie and I and the Perkins in the middle. When we got there... You know, we were strangers. We didn't know these people. They didn't know us. But uh, we left there feeling very much a part of a team that had worked together, you know, presenting God's word and doing God's will. And we're just very appreciative uh, for, the, for all that he did there. And every trip that we have is so different. The main takeaways for me from this trip was, first of all, the great response that the ladies had to the word and the wonderful open doors everywhere we went for further ministry for Renee, um, for women's ministry. And then thirdly, um, that God already had prepared the key ladies there that will then take what we shared and use it to teach others. Uh, and then when uh, Renee and Mark come back to the States in a couple of years, uh, hopefully they'll be able to visit our church and you can hear more about their ministry that is ongoing there. The Perkins had several prayer requests. First, that the spiritual hunger that, these, that happened at these events would continue for these ladies, and they would be able to reorganize their ministry to continue to teach these ladies. They also are asking for prayer. Uh, they want an opportunity to help educate the pastors there and to set up a Bible institute. They also ask for wisdom and patience of the people of Tahiti as they move toward independence from France. And a side note on that is just pray that they will be aware of China's motives as China sits on the doorstep ready to take over. If you want to contact these people, you can contact them at evangelia.org uh, or through VMI. And thank you again for your prayers, for your encouragement. Uh, you were there with us 
And we know that as part of uh, your prayers are part of the divine production for all eternity for you. But we really appreciate you standing with us and uh, your encouragement all along the way. I too want to thank you for your prayers, for your texts of encouragement. Uh, we felt them and we so appreciate them and we thank y'all for traveling along with us. Are there any questions? I understand there was uh, has been pushed back from other churches to Renee and Mark's ministry uh, as they came in. It's been hard to get for them to get uh, established. Uh, yeah, established and accepted by the other churches. Right. So that's part of your request. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, the next trip for the ladies ministry will be the middle of August. We'll go back to Kenya. We've been, we've been there uh, twice beforehand. We'll go back to the coastal area, Mombasa, and another place for two three-day conferences. And then hopefully, we don't know for sure if this is going to work out, but hopefully we'll be able to go to India in the fall sometime. Um, uh-huh. Can you can you speak slower and louder? What do y'all feel to y'all did personally that made the biggest impact when y'all were there? Like on the crowd y'all speaking. Mm-hmm. Good question. It's a very good question. Um, I feel like um, for me, one thing was just to be able to share God's word. Because the the power is in the word, and the word has the ability to reach, as it has in all of our souls, to reach in there and build and edify and answer all the questions, you know, that, that we have for our life. So I guess just the wonderful opportunity to share God's word would be the main thing for me. The teaching is the main thing, and then, of course, the one-on-one is always wonderful because then you can, you know, communicate God's word through. It's just more intimate. But the teaching first, you have to have the teaching to know anything, and so then the one-on-one is really very joyful too. And I will have to say, in any trip, um, in any trip like this where um, ministry is involved, it is the most wonderful thing to see all the spiritual gifts come together. <clears throat> just as God has it for that particular trip. From the organization, the gift of administration that our team leader does so very well, the gift of helps, the gift of um, uh, pastor-teacher, the gifts that the ladies have to minister to us and to each other. It's a marvelous thing to behold the grace of God at work. And we, we see it in every trip, but we most certainly see it, um, uh, saw it on this trip. And if, and if there's anybody out there that is interested in being part of a team, we are always open to ladies that feel called to be a part of this, uh, a part of this group. So just, con- you know, just get with us. Uh, but uh, we thank you for listening today. We thank you for attention, your attention, and uh, we thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Thank you.